Hey everyone, Tankenstein here, and welcome to Stock the Spaded. In this episode, I'll be showcasing the T62 M1, of which is a currently rank 6 battle rating 8.7 medium tank in the Russian Ground Forces Tech Tree. This vehicle is perfect for Stock the Spaded, being that it is an optionally unlocked vehicle that is foldered with the T62. This vehicle is essentially a total upgrade over the T62 for only a currently 0.4 BR increase and features better APF. SDS ammunition once you unlock it, a laser rangefinder, smoke grenades, side skirts, and even a superior power to weight ratio due to a substantially more powerful engine. So this has a lot going on for it with only again a fairly minimal BR increase. Additionally, there is composite armor now on this vehicle, not only on the front of the vehicle on the upper glacis, but also on the turret as well. So again, a total upgrade and you even get a nifty HMG on top. Now, that being said, as with every single stock dissipated video, I go over a very stock match, which is going to be the first match. The second match will be about halfway spaded, and the third match will be fully spaded. Throughout, I will be showing you exactly how this vehicle plays and how you can expect it to play at each stage of its evolution towards being fully spaded. And then at the end of it, I will let you know whether or not I feel that this vehicle is worth grinding for or not. That being said, please consider liking and subscribing if you like this kind of content. Either way, let's get into it. So believe it or not, there are a few more differences between this and the T62M. Like I said, it's a pretty comprehensive upgrade, or the standard T62 rather. Uh, so it is a pretty comprehensive upgrade. So starting off, we have gunner's optics that are a bit different. Let's hope I don't die. Perfect. The, so the gunner's optics on this go up to 8x zoom, whereas the standard T62 goes up to 7x uh, zoom. It's a variable zoom as well. There are a lot of enemies over here. So that's a 3.5 to a 7x zoom, whereas this, again, is a flat 8. This also... What is going on here? These guys are just parading in front of me. Holy guacamole! So continuing, uh, there were just way too many of those much higher BR light tanks that just kind of swarmed me. But to continue, this also has a 5 degree gun depression, whereas the standard T62 has a 6 degree gun depression. Now, I'm not entirely sure if that has to do with the composite armor that's added onto the front, being that it does create kind of a uh, an additional portion of the front of the tank there. But it could also be due to a slightly dirt. Uh, different turret design so I'm not entirely sure what the exact cause is however it is still one degree less which might not seem like a lot but that is 20% different and you have to take your current to, uh, depression your gun depression when you can get it especially with Russian tanks as they have very little of it to begin with now this also has a slightly worse turret traverse rate it's around one degree per second slower than the standard T62, uh, so it's not as good, but I think it's just only due to the weight of the turret. It has increased due to different armors and pieces of equipment and all that, so it is a bit heavier, and thus you have about one degree per second across the board from fully stocked to fully spaded, ace crew, all that. Uh, it is a bit slower, but again, one degree isn't going to make too much of a difference, and you can simply just turn your vehicle to help make up for that difference. This also has access to ATGMs, if I did not mention it before, and it also has different types of APF SDS. Now, I'm not, I forget the exact shell types, the, the names of them, but they are different than what's on offer, again, with the standard T62. Uh, so they are a little bit better, I think, overall, but not necessarily by all so much where it's going to make too much of a difference. Oop, we have an enemy, not sure what, but I got the kill, and unfortunately, wait a second. I thought I was fully stuck. Maybe I may have upgraded. I may have actually added my parts, so my apologies for that. This guy would be helping me anyway, so this is one of those cases where I don't really know if it matters all too much. So thank you so much, MTCA guy. But, ooh, and I am dead. So that said, I got four kills, two deaths. And one assist. My original match, actually, I had where it was like four kills, one base cap, no deaths, but the file got corrupted. So that said, I got through most of the stuff I wanted to talk about fully stock. So that said, let's get into a halfway spaded and see what we could do. So here we are about halfway spaded. 
And I think I've got the engine and maybe filter upgrades as well, which by the way, who at Gaijin was like, oh, you know what would be a really big upgrade if we put the cold air intake on a vehicle? It's a little, it's a little silly, but maybe if they like tried something else, maybe like, I, I don't know. But anywho, so this vehicle is now just kind of barely starting to get up to being somewhat competitive when it comes to speed. Um, at this BR, it's still a very very slow vehicle got the kill very nice xm1 not all that difficult to kill an xm1 i do have a laser range finder i just kind of eyeballed that one though uh because of course i've got an apf sds shell which is nice now by the way the stock shell that comes with this vehicle which is of course heat fs is actually in my opinion not all too bad um it is fairly reasonable Ooh, did i just destroy his ammo i may have let's try to hit his perfect not too bad now the apf sds on this is very good but if you're like wondering oh well the heat fs that sucks you have to remember this is an 8.7 vr vehicle it's not 9.0 9.3 even uh where that might be kind of an issue uh more so i mean it's it actually it's it's heat fs is really really good it's got 500 millimeters of armor pen it's a very potent shell so not only is it a potent shell but it also doesn't really come across enemies that will be able to defeat it all too often regardless like you don't see a lot of composite armor at and around this br you don't really see a lot of well you do see some uh, era of course but not a ton of composite armor that would just be able to passively defeat it but otherwise fully uh, or about halfway spaded I'm pretty impressed by this vehicle. I don't really think that it feels all too... D Ooh, let's see if I can take him out. Probably not. He's starting to move. That's probably way aimed up. Yeah. So I don't really think that this vehicle is necessarily a ton better than when I got the... A like, I feel like the two biggest upgrades thus far on this by far have been APF SDS and also the laser rangefinder. Beyond that... I really don't feel like there's been too much of a quality increase in this vehicle. The filters did not really do anything to noticeably improve speed, as one might imagine. And the engine upgrade has started to help, but it's also still fairly slow. So, again, as I may have said in the intro, thankfully this vehicle does have a, um, a slightly, I mean, just very slightly better power-to-weight ratio than what you might see on the... Um, on the T-62, the standard T-62, but it's not necessarily all too much more. So we have an enemy over there. Wait, is that guy in the base? He's not even moving. Is this considered a, a, a mean kill? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I got three kills. I'm not... He wasn't doing anything. He wasn't doing anything. Their team is being crushed right now. Almost everyone's left. I feel bad, but he was just sitting there. So... Ultimately, as you can see, I mean, like, the speed on this is not bad. Smoke grenades are very nice. It's been a nice upgrade thus far. But, like I said, Laser Rangefinder and APF SDS are the two biggest upgrades thus far that have really actually made a difference for me. Um, ooh, we might have an enemy over here. Oh, that was the enemy. Okay. <laughs> the, uh... The overlay of my ally, like the, the blue screen, the blue name, was just over where the enemy was, so I was kind of confused for a second. But as you can see, I mean, I've got four kills, one base cap. One of those kills, one could argue if I really actually deserved it or not. But this has been very effective, and most of my matches have been like this. I mean, I really, really like this vehicle. Um, like I said, I mean, like for just a 0.4 BR increase over... The standard T62, you get laser range finder, you get yourself some composite armor right there on the front as well as on the turret. You have, uh, well, a pretty decently better APF SDS. Not incredibly better. It is worth noting that the top level APF SDS does have a lower amount of top level penetration compared to this. However, um, it does have a much better distance and angle penetration if that makes any difference so that said let's get into a fully spaded match not too bad halfway spaded this vehicle thus far has been pretty damn good 
let's get into fully spaded. So here we are fully spaded with the T62 M1 and let me tell you guys, this is actually a really, really good vehicle and one thing that I've been seeing a lot with it is a uh, down tier. So whether it's a full down tier like this match or even a partial down tier where the Max BRs, for example, 9.0, they're really, really common. I would say about 60 to 70% of my matches are down tiers of some kind, which is very nice. And a lot of those are full down tiers. So I've been having a lot of good luck with that. Now, when it comes to the upgrades, these side skirts are pretty much useless. They are not worth getting at all. Like, do not prioritize getting them because they do no, they do nothing outside of if you like the look of them, I guess they could do something, but that's really it. The only thing that they're going to protect against is a really, really low-powered heat FS shell, like what you might find on a PT-76B. Like, seriously, it's it's that weak, and I actually tested that in the armor analysis, so it is mediocre, to say the least. Okay, we have ourselves something I do not want to fight. Well, okay, better said, I do want to fight him. I just want to have a, uh, a round ready for him. Oh, and that's not good. That is a French tank. Oh, but the armor, the armor! And the kill. So that's another thing with this vehicle. The armor is fantastic on the M1. Now, the regular T-62 has got okay armor. Um... But nothing nearly as good as what we have on the M1. The M1 has the additional composites on it. It's got the, um, you know, of course, the, the turret armor. It is just overall a much better vehicle. I just screwed that up real bad. And we have his ally, it looks like, coming around over here. Go try to make a sweep. Perfect. This guy is gone. Got that kill. If I can survive for another few seconds, I can come around. Now, when it comes to the APF SDS on this, I wouldn't say that the top level is necessarily all that much better than the bottom level. Um, they're both really good in my opinions. I don't know why I just did that maneuver right there, but you know, I think overall the the three BK or whatever this is, the three BM twenty eight. Overall, it's slightly better, but I really don't think you're not missing out on anything if you're uh, if you're really looking to get that. That's another thing that you can really wait to get if you are uh, you know moving forward, of course, with the uh, T62 M1. But again, I would prioritize movement. I've found that you know, as with any other engine or you know horsepower upgrade, you will see a good amount of movement increase with this. It is much more comfortable uh, actually using this vehicle. And while it isn't as quick as, for example, the T-55A, um, you know, it is still a fairly spry vehicle. Uh, and when I say spry, I'm not saying, like, it's quick, because it really isn't. But it is just good enough where you can kind of get around the map at this point and uh, get a few kills. Kind of like what I'm doing here. Like... It's a, it's, it can barely flank, but it can flank, especially when there are flat paved roads. Now, if I sound a little bit weird, the reason being is because, uh, I just had some dental work, so my, uh, uh, I, I'm a little bit numb, but hopefully I can, uh, hopefully you can understand me. But overall, I mean, I am a huge fan of this vehicle, so do I recommend unlocking it yeah I, I do now as of right now as of the recording and release of this video Gaijin has not made folded vehicles less expensive but they have said in the future that they plan on doing that and if that does go through when that goes through I would 110% recommend getting this now before that happens I would recommend getting this if you really like the T62 uh, or T-55 style of gameplay, basically like the early vehicles, like, again, T-60s, um, and also T-50-ish variant, you know, tanks. This is very similar to those, but pretty much the king of them. I mean, whereas, for example, the T-64, the base model T-64, 
doesn't get a laser rangefinder, this does. This gets all that nice extra composite armor. It's very favorable in that it gets a lot of down tiers. It has pretty damn good APF SDS. I mean, this can go through. This APF SDS has a better max pen than the M1 Abrams, right? Which is fantastic in my opinion. I thought I just saw an enemy. And you're, it's just a very good overall vehicle where, in my opinions, the only real knocks I could have against it are going to be the um, turret reverse. It is still a little bit lackluster when it comes to mobility. It's not terrible, but it's just not... It's not one of the faster vehicles, even with all the engine upgrades. It has like a 16, 16 and a half power to weight ratio. Um, you know, horsepower per ton power to weight ratio. So it's not fantastic, but it is still, I would say, sufficient. We have an enemy. Okay, let's straighten out. And that is the composite armor right there. Boom, bada boom. I can almost guarantee you that I got shot right in that composite armor in the front. And uh, I'm not entirely sure if I did, but that composite armor, that plate right there in the front, right here, is actually quite good. It's quite useful, especially when an enemy, obviously when an enemy hits it. Because that's what you want. <laughs> you want enemies to hit you where your armor is thickest if they're going to hit you at all. But again, in general, uh, yeah, this is... An excellent vehicle. I mean, it's on a scale of 1 to 10, right? For armament, I would give it a good solid 7.5, which on my scale, that's really, really, really good. That's excellent. For survivability, I would give it 6.75 to a 7.5, which is really, really good. And for mobility, I would give it prob... And this is all re like relative to BR. And also, I have no pre-planning when I'm saying all this. So this is just off the top of my head. But when it comes to mobility, eh, I'd probably give it a four and a half, right? Not terrible, not great, a little bit worse than average, but still very, very useful. And that's what this vehicle is. I mean, like, it's not for those that really want a, uh, you know, a, a, a race car. However, this will still do a ton of... When it comes to aerial mobility, I just screwed that up, but my buddy managed to get that kill, so good on him. And uh, by the way, T-55, that is another vehicle. I am in love with it. I love the T-55. What a wonderful vehicle in War Thunder. Okay, we have an enemy over here. Had an enemy over there. Got six kills. And this is another thing. Like I said, this thing is in down tiers pretty much all the time. And because it's in down tiers all the time, you are going to get it where most people are using heat FS and they can't go through you or they don't have the advantage of a stabilizer like you do. Or, you know, any number of things. This thing has the advantage. They don't have laser rangefinders. I do. You know, and that's another thing, actually. This standard heat FS shell, the 3PK15M that comes with this vehicle, is totally usable pretty much throughout the entire range of this vehicle. Now, I personally prefer the APF SDS. I think it is still a much better shell. However, it is still a very usable shell, and you really won't be missing out on kills before you get the first APF SDS, which I think is the 3BM21. So an extremely capable vehicle, all the way from stock to spaded. This is a very, very easy vehicle to play regardless. I mean... The biggest upgrades, in my opinion, are going to be the mobility, are going to be the laser rangefinder. Smoke grenades are nice. However, uh, they do launch a little bit weird. I'll just show you here. They're a very thin pattern smoke grenade, right? Like, they don't launch left and right. They just launch both straight, which kind of sucks. But they're still usable. I mean, very, very usable. And they've saved me probably a dozen times with this vehicle or more. So, yeah, overall, 100% recommend getting this vehicle if you uh, especially once the folder upgrades uh, come out for war thunder and we start seeing oh my connection was lost because i'm doing too damn well uh but either way thanks so much for watching uh, of course please if you'd like please consider liking commenting subscribing it all means the world to me i mean this video is pretty much done but pretty much a perfect match from 
at this point, it's got to be one of my favorite vehicles in all of War Thunder. So again, thank you all so much for your continued support, and I will see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.